been called to order this meeting of the Plain Township Board of Trustees for Tuesday, December 9th. If everybody will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before us, we do have an agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections by fellow uh, board members at this time? And Mr. Chairman, I would like to recommend that we move public speaks up to the beginning portion of the agenda um, in the event that our law director has to leave for a uh, previously scheduled function for his daughter. Um, so that way, if there's any legal issues, we can address those while I'm here. Okay. Are there any other additions, deletions, or corrections by fellow board members or department heads? Okay. The agenda will stand as amended, and it actually, that will start out with public speech, which essentially, if there's anybody in the crowd that wishes to address the board of trustees at this point in time, just take your name, your address for the fiscal officer for the record, and then you may address the board. Anybody? Okay, that closes out public speaks. We do not have anything under the sheriff's report. That's going to take us those to our detective's report. I'm going to turn it over to Detective Conan. Uh, thank you. Uh, the uh, monthly report for November 2014, we had uh, 762 calls for service, uh, 86 crashes. We were down 2% as compared to 2013. Our crashes with injury were down. We only had eight. Uh, for the month of November, 112 alarms that we responded to, uh, 141 traffic stops. I thought that was kind of the crash with injury was down 42 percent, but our traffic stops were up 41 percent. That was kind of unique. Uh, we had 94 citations issued with um, 31 arrests. So there was also an increase uh, in both of those numbers. Uh, for me, I had 12 follow-up investigations uh, with eight closed cases for the month. That's close, right? Thank you. Uh, as well, <coughs> let the record reflect that our administrator, Ms. Campbell, is not here due to a uh, family commitment this evening that's excused by the board. Unfinished business um, transitional reinsurance fee. I was told that Mr. Flex is supposed to handle it. Okay. Okay. Essentially, this is, uh, I guess, just a, a resolution similar to last week's meeting to, uh, to authorize the, uh, the payment that needs to be made under the Affordable Health Care Act for the transitional reserve. Okay. I'll, also, also move on. Second. Finish business number one. So we've got a second, Mr. Lino. Discussion. I think all of our comments are previously record, recorded. My feelings haven't changed on that. I'm correct. My feelings haven't changed either, but. We don't have any necessary as well. That's correct. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Leo? Yes. Mr. Gigasis? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. <coughs> That's going to take us to new business, and I'm going to turn that over uh, to Mr. Paul. Uh, yes. It's, uh, every year we have appointments for our members of the Zoning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals uh, come up, and this year we have had. We have a member from the Board of Zoning Appeals who has um, decided to retire from the board. It's my honor to have Mr. Jim McVeigh here in the audience tonight. <coughs> I'm going to read the email that he, he sent. Says, Denny, it has been a privilege and I have met some great people. However, I've been on earth for a little more than four or four years and it's time to step down for younger blood. Therefore, I do not wish to be considered for another term. For some reason, and I don't know why, I have kept a log of my BZA activities. I have attended a total of 292 meetings, seminars, or educational sessions. Driving to and from these activities has put about 3,500 miles on my vehicle. It has been a great experience, and I wish to thank the trustees and all the township employees the best for the future. You all do a terrific job. Our moving to Plain Township 43 years ago was a very wise decision. 
Uh, Jim has been on the board for over 20 years. He has family members in the audience here with him tonight, as well as a couple of board members. And I would like to ask him to come up. And we have a plaque that we will have uh, <laughs> President Hahn read on his behalf. And we're also, Jim, we're going to retire your name uh, plaque for you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're going to get your name flat. At least there's not a number on it, right? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm down here. I didn't expect all this. <laughs> here, we've actually, After 20 some years, you earned it. <laughs> we've got a nice plaque here that says uh, it's Plain Township logo, James McVeigh, in recognition of your 24 years of service on the Plain Township Board of Zoning Appeals, 1991 through 2014. We've got to sign the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Lou Giabasis, Scott Haas, Alino. Plain Township Board of Zoning Appeals, and the citizens of Plain Township. We truly do commend you for your, all of your years of service you, to our community. It's been a pleasure. It's never been an, it's not an easy one, we know that. Thank you very much. It was a real pleasure. school system. My grandchildren have gone through the school system. Jeff works for the township and she's a teacher at Taft. Wow. So we're very, very happy to be playing or living and playing. Thank you. things that all the people that appeared in front of your board had to say about some of those decisions that you made. <laughs> um, you know, the 20 years I've been a trustee, you know, we've had some controversial issues, but with the Board of Appeals and the zoning boards, it's entirely different because usually um, those meetings and those hearings, uh, uh, there's sore feelings on both sides of the issue and you never make everybody happy and you guys have to make some tough decisions. And um, I'm very honored that you served on this board that entire time, at least that I've been here for my tenure. You've done a fantastic job for us Thank and you. the community. Uh, just your, your first class. You're, you're, you, I've known you, and, and uh, we were very happy and fortunate that we had you on our, on our zoning. Um, you made some great decisions, and, and you went, you know, it's not easy being in front of a group and having to make that decision. And, uh, I think you're a first class human being and um, we were very lucky that we had you and our residents were very lucky that we had you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. I thought we were going to let it be the last one presenting. So. Um, under new, new business number two. Uh, it's a resolution to authorize payment to Worcester Brothers Landscaping for November 2014 for composting. Okay. We'll so move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. And Mr. Haas? Yes. Thank you. Number of new business. That's going to take us to our fiscal officer's report. I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Flex. 
All right, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, item number one is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to authorize the pending warrants in the amount of $130,327.63. I will so move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Leo? Yes. Fiscal Officer number two is a request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to authorize the payment of the regular payroll and amount not to exceed $220,000. So, so moved for anything. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. And Mr. Leo? Yes. Fiscal Officer number three is a request for a resolution by the board to authorize the payment for the following medical claims as provided by all care. Board and pay. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Giovasis? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Fiscal Officer number four does the financial report for the end of December, or through the end of December, or November, I'm sorry. Fiscal Officer uh, number five, uh, so there's been a request for um, a transfer of ownership for a, uh, a liquor permit. This is up there at the, at the barrel room. I know that, uh, Linda has contacted the sheriff. They haven't had any issues out there at the barrel room, so they don't have any concerns with regard to this. This is just whether or not um, we want to post, post an objection to the transfer or not, but I don't really see a reason to. There have been no other issues. <laughs> okay, send that over. First, first one inspection. Fiscal officer number six, uh, it's a request for a resolution uh, to, to establish a new lighting district uh, based upon the uh, request that we got uh, back on November 25th uh, at Pendrove Avenue Northeast uh, with the proper signatures and everything being. Uh, presented uh, this would be to uh, set the hearing for Tuesday, January 13th at 6:15, and uh, allow the fiscal office to send notices out to all those residents that are affected by it. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. G. Basis. Yes. Mr. Lena. Yes. And Mr. Haas. Yes. And fiscal officer number seven is uh, request for resolution um, by the board. Uh, this resolution essentially is to um, to amend the section 125 premium only plan uh, this is another uh, thing that came about with the affordable health care act it's in case in case an employee goes down from full-time to part-time status um, or decides to elect not to receive our our health insurance benefits and they opt to go out into the market and receive benefits there this will allow them to withdraw out of that section 125 plan that we pass every year so up an amendment that needs to be made to that agreement to, to allow them to do that. So move. Second. <clears throat> Discussion. Roll call. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Mr. Lena? Yes. And Mr. Hodge? Yes. This <clears throat> officer number eight is a request for resolution by the board for the following transfers. Mm -hmm. So move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. That was Mr. Hawes in the second, correct? Uh, that was Mr. Mr. G. Basin. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. This <clears throat> officer number nine this is a uh, request for a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to authorize the payment for the members of the uh, Township Board of Zoning Appeals and Zoning Commissions for the period of July 1st through December 31st of 2014, $50 per meeting, for a total of $1,300. And so of second discussion, roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. Fiscal Officer number 10. Uh, it's a, uh, a request for a resolution by the board uh, authorizing the fiscal officer to close out the fire district fund with a balance of $51,833.49 uh, and certify that to the, the auditor and appropriate those funds back into the uh, fire building fund account 21A, uh, which is 10A06 under the new system. So moved. Second. 
Second, Mr. Lino. Discussion? <clears throat> Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Mr. Hollis? Yes. Uh, Fiscal Officer number 11 is just uh, just a notification just to set the record commission meeting for this year for December 23rd, 2014 at uh, 540. So, so for Scott and myself, there's no resolution. Okay. Call. And then Fiscal Officer number 12, finally, it's just a request for a resolution by the board uh, to authorize the uh, refund as follows for overpayments of emergency medical services as requested by a high ability. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Uh, that will conclude the uh, Fiscal Officer's report for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Parks. Take us to the fire department and let's turn it over to Chief Snyder. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, item number one is the monthly report. Good. And item number two is the authorized of purchase and payment to uh, Ventry One, the 20 GX 160 van and one Lentry light with a Honda engine and generator. From QD CIP Fire, and uh, not to exceed seven thousand dollars. I will so move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Jabez. Yes. Mr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Lena. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. That will take us to Mr. Asiato, the Road Department. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is the monthly report for November.
discussion, and it's definitely with regret, with regrets, especially given the extenuating circumstances that the board accepted, accepts it, but understanding that family is the priority here. Being in contact yeah. with Gary a lot, and uh, he's doing well. The family's grieving, but they're getting better. So uh, this is probably for the best for all of them at this point. He, um, very hard worker. Yeah, he's good um, around it. Excellent job. Been out with him when he was plowing, and pretty amazing how he handles that truck. And work did he get? We're going to get you out there one of these days. <laughs> he hasn't got used to the hang little shift on the wheel problem. You need to trade trucks one time, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, had to trade trucks so you can go use the other one. But no, you know, in recognition to Gary, um, you know, again, 19 years, that's a long time. A lot, a lot of wear and tear on a person's body. You know that more than anybody, Joe. And, those guys are out there, they're working their tails off, especially this time of the year. You know, all hours of the night. It takes a toll on a person outside of the... Sleep when you can and when you get older. It's a lot harder. I you get it. <laughs> um, and again, on behalf of myself, again, you know, thank, make sure you thank you when you see him. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Mina? Yes. Mr. G. Basis? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, that's it. Um, and that will conclude the road department. It's going to take us to the zoning department. I'll turn that over to Mr. Falk. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number one before you this evening is the monthly report for November. On the Dollar uh, General, how soon shall we expect a uh, break ground or start? Uh, they've received their zoning permit. They're working through their county zoning permit right now. Um, once that all goes through, then we'll get the permit to demolish it. Which building is it going to be in? The 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 immediately to the west the, of the uh, dog park. Yeah. Right, the one to the west of the dog park. The it's house, a house that sits there right now, correct. Oh, so just the one property? Yes, the dog park is large enough. Okay. Okay, um, item number two, we have a, this is an item, an issue that has come up a couple of different times. I've been in contact with uh, Captain Slavoff of our fire department regarding the two Starfire gas stations that we have in the township. And there are issues with the Ohio Attorney General's Office in that the Ohio Attorney General's Office has issued uh, orders to remove or put in service the underground tanks. Obviously, uh, that's not happened. Those orders were issued on February 25th of 2010. Uh, there was an attempt to put these out at a sheriff's sale or looking into possibly selling the property that a sheriff sold because they're very delinquent in taxes. Unfortunately, because of the amount of delinquency in taxes and the amount of cost that it would take to abate them, there aren't any takers on that. So the Attorney General's office uh, apparently has had a discussion between uh, Captain Slaybot, I believe Ms. Campbell was involved with it, regarding the possibility of the township forgiving the nuisance payments and then also checking into whether or not someone would, or the, the rest of the county agency would forgive or forgive the uh, remainder of delinquent taxes. With the concept that possibly with those being forgiven, it might make it a little more attractive for someone to purchase the properties. Um, the, the two that we have in, in the township, the one on Route 62 is a viable site. It is properly zoned. It's uh, about an acre and a half property, and it's a legitimate site. Uh, the other one we have on Market Avenue is not a viable site anymore. It lost its non-conforming use several years back. It currently sits in a R1 residential district. Uh, 
So that site, to be quite frank, is going to be a little harder um, not to crack as far as what goes on. But we wanted to bring this up so we could possibly uh, continue some discussion, getting back with Captain Slavoff and working with the you know, Attorney General's office. The total nuisance fees between the two parcels is $17,282. $17,000. Yes, $282. Those are our mowings and board ups and that type of thing. What's the total? Total, I mean, total delinquent taxes is $46,350. On top of those fees? Or is that? That's, that's total. That's total. So, that includes, so we're, we're approximately a little greater than a third. Third of it. Than a third. Correct. It. And what is the, the figures are for abatement? Yeah, to say because that's the abatement. The abatement, really abatement figures. That's for outfield abatement. Uh, the the to to mitigate the issues. Of, if we have to take the tanks out, tanks alone would probably cost fifty to seventy five thousand dollars per site, and then we don't know if there has been any release of gas because these are rolled steel tanks. Uh, we don't know if a pond would take the tanks out. If there is a release underneath that, we would have to go in and then mitigate uh, contaminated soil. Um, I just received this afternoon information about a, uh, a loan fund an interest fee loan fund that would at least possibly pay for assessments. Uh, there is also, Regional Planning Commission also has, is in the process of receiving funding for phase one and phase two site assessments. And we have put both of these locations on their list of possible sites to look at. And once again, uh, basically a phase one assessment People pretty much about says, yep, there's an old gas station there and there could be problems. Phase one is pretty simple. The phase two site assessment is when they actually get in and get involved with the actual testing, do soil samples, that type of thing. And that's what really then sets the tone for how much an actual uh, mitigation would cost. Uh, so we're, we're trying to look into those. I've been working with Regional Planning Commission on uh, at least seeing if we can find, get funding for the site assessment. As, you know, as a governmental entity, we can do that. We don't have to be the owner. And, you know, it's not our problem. We don't have to be the owner, but we can initiate the, these actions. Um, you know, there. We just wanted to kind of bring this back, back up for everybody. There, there appears to be a little bit of movement. We actually had a gentleman in the office between the fire department and my office at the end of last week, who has a deed on the properties, but the deed's never been recorded because he didn't want to record it because of the unpaid tax. So he claims he owns it, but he doesn't own it. One of those things. He says, you know, basically he says, if, if you give, if he, he's willing, out of the kindness of his heart, he's willing to donate the Market Avenue property to the township. Sure, sure. <laughs> $75,000. Yeah. In, in return, then, and then, then, you know, you get, because with brownfield assessments, the money goes to governmental political subdivisions. And we then enforce and do that. So. But once we undertake any mitigation effort, we oh, yeah, come in responsible. Well, sure. I, I, so obviously. That's certainly a donation. I would. Yeah. I don't. I don't believe we're going. I would. I don't believe I would recommend we accept that donation. Right. No. Right. Uh, Whitmore Avenue is in Canton Township. That one is just south of our But I, I, Captain Slaybaugh and I wanted to bring this up, uh, bring the attention up because it is something we are looking into, working with the Attorney General's office on, and, and trying to find possible sources of funding to at least get the assessments done so there will be a better concept of what may or may not be out there. Excuse me, just let the board into this. I believe there's 15 properties in the state that they'll have uh, yeah. generals working with right now to try to mitigate, try to figure out what they want to do with it. So, uh, unfortunately, there's two of those properties are in the township. So, we want to 
Canton Township, and uh, I think there's another three in the city, three or four in the city so, of Canton. So. Uh, anyway, so we're you know we're not obviously the only ones, but uh, so there's 15 of these in the state. I guess what I have a problem with them saying wait wait a minute, I mean these people have been absolutely negligent in any responsibility of keeping it in the keeping it in it. We believe the current owner. The current, we believe the current listed owner has left the country. <laughs> for both? Yeah, for all the starfighters. I mean, it's our understanding that, that they may, may be out of the country. Huh? I mean, the fact that we in a non-extradition country. <laughs> the fact the fact that we've expended taxpayer taxpayer resources to at least maintain some. Low, modest level of acceptability. Acceptability. Well, those resources could have been used elsewhere, not only monetarily, but as well as our human resource capitals on other projects. I'm not inclined to back off, back off on this myself. Yet, I mean, if something comes serious, comes serious, you know, the fact that you're looking at fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars to site. I mean, there's a hundred to hundred and fifty. I mean. Shoot, we're not, we're barely 10% of Correct. that total. And I mean, that's just remediate, remediation. That's not even developing. Absolutely. You know, specifically the site on North Market has been a, an eyesore and a thorn in those people's sides over there for years. Personally, I would entertain, I hope the board at the time would entertain for giving those over there in that residential area if a buyer became available and was serious about purchasing the property and taking care of it. Yeah. So we've got some type of serious the the biggest biggest issue forward with that is that if the buyer wants, if someone buys it, then they, then they accept responsibility for the tanks. Yeah. And that, that site is, once again, it's, it's lost its not performing use a long time, but it's extremely small. It's really not a viable commercial site. And, you know, uh, I, I, or somebody a local neighbor to buy that and then assume the responsibility for the tanks and everything. Oh, that's almost, I, you know, I can't see, see that happening. being quite a lot of slim just left huh? as far as chance. But you know, we're, just, once again, I wanted, we wanted to bring this up to let you know that we're, that one of those things that we're involved with and trying to look into and seeing if there's a possible way that we can try to solve the situation. Collectively, you know, on the ground, but you know, should a viable or a serious, well, the serious arrested mm -hmm. party, then we'll revisit it at that time if it helps re remove the blight as well as mm -hmm. get it into some other productive use. Okay, well, very, very good. Well, we'll, we'll just we'll keep keep rolling on that, and, and maybe something will show up on these days. Okay. Thank you. Um, item number three. Dennis, you hold this one. I want to say, did we any further movement with anything with the, what was your pizza place? Just north of the pasture, that's where they, they removed the, the top, top half of it, but I mean, this has still got on. on, you, on you I mean, there's not a month that goes by that I don't make three phone calls about the little light blue pizza place. It sits down in the mall. It sits down in the mall. It's, it's, it's north of the stock. Well, it's just dilapidated. Oh, so it's it's there, it's a, they still running anything on it? No, no, no nothing's been. It is a little commercial. Who owns it? I don't recall something. Okay. Has the building still structured since now? Are we looking at it? I, I keep looking at it. We don't have funds to tear it down. Mm -hmm. I think that's where, whenever we last pushed on it, that's why the tower, that center piece, mm -hmm. was removed was because of the structural part on that, but it was deemed the rest of it. Well, so that's been open now for you when they removed the top portion. That exposed the roof. I would have to take another look at it. Yeah, I mean, just take another, because there's not a month that goes by that I don't get several phone calls asking, you know, what's ever going to happen with that over there. Okay. I mean, that's in, you know, where it's located. We, you know, we, if we can get something done, we should be maybe trying to market that property because it's zone commercial. Actually, the well, conversation after, after the meeting because okay. another somebody that's still looking for property 
long market that wouldn't be too far off. We need parking space. I'm not sure if that's the case. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number three is a motion. Uh, be it hereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to appoint Richard Beck to the Plain Township Board of Zoning Appeal for a five-year term, commencing January 1st, 2015, and expiring December 31st, 2019. Uh, Rick Beck is currently the serving as the alternate on the Board of Zoning Appeals and has expressed an interest to uh, move up to the position that Mr. Uh, McVeigh is vacating. And, uh, Mr. Beck has done a fine job. He's been an all runner for two years. I think he's only missed one meeting. Uh, he's done an excellent job, and I would recommend that this action be taken. I will so move on zoning number three. Second. Discussion. I think just for the sake of what we've consistently done, moving the alternates. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a developing minor league talent and finally moving it up to the mainstay. It's, it's a good process. Right. I was going to say, we, I think we just selected Mr. Pack about a few years ago. So so right. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lino? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Thank you. And then uh, make sure you tell him he's got some big shoes. He, he knows. He's <laughs> we, want, we want 24 years out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can beat Jim. Um, um, item number four. Uh, once again, this is a reappointment to the Zoning Commission, uh, be it hereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Stark County, Ohio, to reappoint Terrence Seberg to the Plain Township Board of Zoning Commission for a five-year term commencing January 1, 2015 and expiring December 31, 2019. Uh, Mr. Seberger has been a member of the Zoning Commission uh, since 1995. He's an attorney with very extensive knowledge of zoning. He's the current chairperson. Um, we appreciate his service and he's expressed an interest in serving one more term. And I would also like to recommend that. I will so move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. No. Mr. Leon? Yes. Mr. Javasis? Yes. And Mr. Haas? Yes. <clears throat> and then just as a, as a quick follow up on that, um, I would recommend that possibly on January, our first January meeting that uh, we have interviewed some candidates to fill the position uh, vacated by Mr. Beck for welcoming it to the board of zoning. And these candidates, are we going to advertise? We, we, we've we we've always been advertised, and the deadline is over, and we receive them. Okay. So now what I'll do is go through, and we'll we'll follow the standard process. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Falk. It's going to take us to our parks department. Turn over to Mr. Steinberg. Gentlemen, item number one is the uh, monthly report. Services provided at the Graveyard 77 Lacrosse Tournament on November 1 and 2 on 14A <coughs> 08A for services not to exceed the amount of 2135. Oh, so Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Givasis? Yes. And Mr. Hawes? Yes. <coughs> Item number three is just a uh, verbal recap of Winterfest. This is our sixth one. We had well over um, 3,000 plus people for the first time. We had the parking lot full the whole time and um, some general parking issues throughout the neighborhood. <laughs> people just were coming and not leaving. Um, weather didn't play to our favor this year, but it worked out well as it could possibly have. And uh, we're wrapping up and looking to improve for next year. If I may, once again, it was well done, first class again. It's crazy though how cold, how that wind blows so hard there. Mm -hmm. Every year it just seems to be so cold down. But, Santa's uh, tent took a trip back to the North Pole without Santa. But um, sure. really well put together. Um, they did a great job with the lights again. Just the, their whole crew did a great job. It was really put together well. I'll pass along. One of them is here tonight, so message received. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you.
Thank you. Nothing under the law director. It's going to take us to communications. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is a meeting notice for the Star County Township Association that will be held at uh, Sky and Pines on Thursday, December 18th, with hors d'oeuvres at 6:30 and dinner at 7. Um, sponsored by East o Dominion East Ohio, and they will be taking nominations. I'm one year for vice president. I nominate Scott again. I am comfortably removed. Cloud. The second one is for clout. Um, there's a breakfast reception on Wednesday, January 28th in uh, Columbus at 8 to 9 30. It's for the large townships, urban townships in Ohio. That will wrap up communications. We'd already had previously moved public speech to the beginning, given. Concerns of trustees, do either of my fellow board members have any? I have one thing. I got a phone call uh, earlier this afternoon about hunting uh, that's taking place up near the water tower on Market Avenue, the, from the allotment behind the water tower. There's some of the wooded area along the side, runs along the backside of, of uh, the property it used to be farmed. Um, there's been some gunshots, run residents said that they walked back there and confronted the people. They had a, uh, a, uh, a blind machine set up back there in the woods. And um, they're shooting them. It's pretty close to some people's homes over there. So I told them I would bring it up tonight and turn it over to you. Did we get a call earlier? Somebody called about honey. Are they allowed to hunt right here? If it's, if it's a lot of, how many acres? How many acres do you need to hunt on a property that's surrounded by? How many acres? In other I'll, words, if I'll, an area that's surrounded by all residential. It's, it's, it's not about hunting, it's the shooting. The it's, shooting? Yeah, yeah. So, if they're not, if they're, you know, with the residential area, yeah, I'm pretty sure you need a backstop. At the very, very minimum. Well, both directions, you need to shoot part. across the field towards the houses on the other side of Schneider, or the other directions right. towards the houses at the top of the hill. So right, yeah, there. there's no good area. So, yeah, I mean, several of the people over there were concerned, and I don't know if that would bring it up to me to the okay. record. And they have a blind set up. There's a blind set up there in the woods. Okay. They confronted um, four young adults, probably in their early 20s. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to let the record reflect. I've got, I've got two items. I know Detective Hunter's been privy to the first one, but I told the individual that stated a record of bot bottling, bottling area off the start cliff, concerns of speeding. Let the record reflect that the, the, there was an individual, his spouse, that actually performed their own traffic study because of access to equipment that the township was provided with those reports. We provided them back our own reports and, you know, just for the sake of what the board has consistently done in the past, the resident asked about putting stop signs in to control speed. We've already reviewed previously through Ohio Revised Code and so forth that stop signs are not a speed control mechani mechanism. No. The second was speed bumps. I had explained in a phone conversation as well as in an email correspondence. I know. Mr. Agostino, I believe, our administrator, Ms. Campbell, I believe you were copied on that speed bumps are not feasible due to, one, how we have to upkeep roads, especially in the winter, but then the cost to provide those and then the precedence that, that it sets. Um, the residents over there off of Starcliff, you know, seem to think that we need to have an additional speed study done over there, but 25 Correct me if I'm wrong, but 25 is the lowest that that speed right. can be set. So, and, uh, I just provided Detective Cronin with the 
five days feet from the uh, rear out. And the upper speed was 22 and 31 miles per hour. So you're always going to have car speed. Yeah. Okay. I've explained it. I've, at, I've offered them, like we've done a pump of Firestone, mm -hmm. either designate specific driveways or spots that you can sit. We'll kick it all day long for anybody who's, who's violating it. You know, I just want it to be a matter of the record, even though we've dealt with it here, because the individual was asking for a course of action, and essentially it's going to be the regular continued patrols mm -hmm. there. Um, that's the only thing on that matter. The other is more so a comment. You know, we, we do a number of chari charitable, uh, or we support a number of charitable endeavors out, out here in Towns of Paul. And the turnout this year for the USO initiative it has been over overwhelming. So I thank everybody in the community who has contributed something to that because literally I've, I've used this as a collection point along with two other locations. And we're probably going to have a truck and a trailer full of just material that's going to go to military families that have you know, shortfalls that they can go into this family support room and get additional stuff to help them with their, ba with their basic needs. So thanks to the folks out in the township community that did donate to that. Nice job. Nothing else? Concerns of the uh, fiscal officer? No. Okay. It's going to take us... Mr. Lena, did you have a question? Okay. It's going to take us to the approval of the minutes for November 25th, 2014, which also moved. Can you second it? Second, Mr. Lena. Discussion? Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Mr. Hodge? Yes. yes. And I will move that we adjourn at 6.46 p.m. from this regular meeting of the Plank Township Board of Trustees. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lena? Yes. Mr. Giovesis? Mr. Giovesis? Yes. Mr. Hodge? Yes. Because this is what you can do. That's a compliment.